In this video, we're going to do a quick review of the operations with fractions, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So I put them in this order because I think that this is the order of difficulty. Uh, multiplication is actually the easiest thing to do when you're multiplying fractions. So just a quick review of the rule. If you have two fractions, A over B times C over D, to multiply those, you just multiply straight across. So A times C will be on the top, and B times D will be in the bottom, or your denominator. For example, let's say we wanted to take 2 thirds times, oh, how about uh, 1 half? All right, so if we multiply straight across, we get 2 times 1 on the top, which is 2 and 3 times 2 which is 6 on the bottom and you can reduce that by dividing both of those by 2 which would give you 1 third. Now notice that when you're multiplying um, you can cancel as well. Maybe I'll put a little let's put that right here just a little reminder that when you're multiplying you can cancel all these other operations you cannot cancel. You don't want to be canceling dividing when you're doing division, addition, or subtraction. But when there's a multiply there, I could cancel this 2 with this 2. Or I could think of it as 2 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 2 once. All right, so if I canceled first instead of multiplying, I would end up with 1 times 1 on the top, which is 1, and 3 times 1 on the bottom, which is 3. If you cancel, you end up not having to reduce. Okay, so it's sort of like reducing before you multiply. So those are the basics of multiplication. Now if you had a mixed number like 3 and 1 third times some other mixed number, 2 and a half, then you have to change these mixed numbers to this fraction format to use this rule. So I'd have to go 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 thirds. 2 times uh, 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, so that gives me 5 halves. Now I can check and see if there's anything I can cancel, and there is. This 2 and this 10, 2 will go into both of those. So 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. What I'm left with is 5 times 5, which is 25 on the top, and 3 times 1, which is 3 on the bottom, and then I can change that back to a mixed number by dividing. 25 divided by 3. 3 goes into 25 8 times with 1 left over, so 8 and 1 third. Alright, now when you're dividing, the rule is A over B divided by C over D is the same as A over B times D over C. So you want to keep the first fraction the same, change the divide to a multiply, and then take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So for example, if we had 3 eighths divided by 3 fifths, we would want to use this rule and keep the 3 eighths the same, change the divide to a multiply, and take the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. Now that I've changed this to a multiplication problem using the rule, I can cancel. So I could cancel this 3 and this 3, and I'm left with 5 eighths. Now the same thing's going to hold true that happened when we were multiplying. If you have, let's do a different color, if you have a, oh, let's say a whole number divided by a mixed number, then what you would want to do there is change your mixed number to an improper fraction, which would be 3 over 2, and change this to a fraction, which would be 7 over 1, all right, dividing. Now you have to flip it, so 7 over 1 times 2 over 3, you have to flip the second fraction, and then you can multiply straight across and get 14 over 3, divide it to change it to a mixed number, Let's see, 3 goes into 14, 4 times for 12, so that would be 2 left over. All right, so multiplying and, di and dividing are really similar. You just have to remember with the dividing to take the reciprocal of the second fraction and then multiply. And you don't have to worry about common denominators or anything like that. It's just uh, multiplying straight across and then reducing your answer. All right, so your basic rule for adding 
would be a over b plus c over b. Now notice I have to have these two numbers the same on the bottom. It's going to be a plus c on the top and then just a b on the bottom. And for subtracting, it's the same exact rule except there's a subtraction. a over b minus c over b is a minus c over b. So the key with these guys is you have to have the same number on the bottom. Now if the number on the bottom is the same, for example, if we had 5 eighths take away, or let's do add 5 eighths plus 2 eighths, well, I can just follow this rule. 5 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 plus 2 on the top and 8 on the bottom, and I'm done. The problem comes, or the more work comes, when we don't have the same num denominator, the same number on the bottom. Say we had 5 eighths plus 1 fourth. Well, the only way you can add is to use this rule. So you have to have these two numbers on the bottom be the same in order to add. There's no other way to do it, okay? So I have to make these two numbers the same. And the way I can do that, I can change this 4 into an 8 by multiplying by 2. Now, if I multiply the bottom of a fraction by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2 in order for that fraction to retain its value. If I multiply the top and bottom by 2, I get 2 eighths. Well, 2 eighths is the same amount as 1 quarter. If you take a candy bar and cut it into 8 pieces and eat 2, or you take the same candy bar and cut it into 4 pieces and eat 1, you're eating the same amount of calories. It's the same size bar, okay? It's the same amount of candy bar. So now that I have my common denominator, now I can um, add these together, okay? Came a coincidence that it was the same one I did up there. Now, let's say you have, let's do a subtraction problem with a um, mixed number. So let's say you have something like 4 and 7 eighths plus 2 and 1 half. Okay, a good way to do these sometimes is to line them up like this. Unlike the multiplication, you do not have to change these into fractions, all right? You don't have to change them into improper fractions. You can add the whole number parts and the uh, fraction parts separately, and that'll be fine. We still need to get a common denominator here, which is again going to be 8, so I'll multiply the top and bottom by 4, and that's going to give me 4 eighths. All right, so now I can add these guys together. Oh, I got all kinds of different colors going here, don't I? Let's see if I can get that purple color back. How about that one? So if I add the whole number parts, I get 4 plus 2 is 6. And then the fraction part, 7 eighths plus 4 eighths is 11 eighths. Now 11 eighths, that's an improper fraction. I don't want to leave it like that, all right? 11 eighths is 1 and 3 eighths. So if I combine that with the 6, that gives me 7 and 3 eighths. All right, if this was a subtraction problem, you would just subtract these numbers and subtract these fractions. Um, if it was 4 and 7 eighths minus 2 and 4 eighths, you would just subtract 4 take away 2 is 2, and 7 take away 4 is 3, and then the bottom number stays the same. Adding and subtracting are basically almost exactly the same. It just, um, the only difference is what happens in your numerator, whether you add or subtract. All right, let me show you one last little thing that can happen. Let's say we have something like um, 8 and 1 third minus 2 and, well, let's just do 2 thirds. We'll do a common denominator to start. All right, so here's the problem. I can't take away 2 thirds from 1 third. So I need to borrow. Now the way you borrow when you're doing fractions, you're still going to take 1 from the 8 and get 7. All right, but now I've got this 1 floating around. I'm not going to put a 1 in front of the 11. That's not quite going to work. What I'm going to do with this 1 I borrowed is I'm going to change it into 3 thirds. All right, let's think about this for a second. 3 thirds, how much is that worth? That's worth 1. All right, so this 3 thirds, that's the 1 that I borrowed. 
I'm going to add that to the one third that's already there, and that's going to give me four thirds. So now I can do the subtraction. Seven take away two is five, and four thirds take away two thirds is two thirds. So this is another little thing that can happen when you're uh, subtracting fractions is you, you have to borrow. If we didn't have a common denominator here, we'd first want to get a common denominator and then borrow. So this is just a quick overview of uh, operations with fractions. Multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting. It's really important to understand um, how they're the same and how they're different. I would really think about multiplying and dividing as being almost one type of thing. Like think of these, instead of thinking of having four different operations, think about having two. These two go together, multiplying and dividing. Dividing is almost exactly the same as multiplying. The only difference is you have to flip the second fraction. Otherwise, they're exactly the same, same rules. Adding and subtracting are almost exactly the same. You have to get the common denominator. You can add the whole number parts and the fraction parts of your mixed numbers. The only difference is in your numerator, whether you add the two numerators or subtract them. So if you can kind of get these two things separate in your head and um, memorize the rules for multiplying and dividing, then memorize how you do adding and subtracting, you should be good to go from there.